everyone. Welcome to the NQC Roundtable at the National Quartet Convention in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I'm Danny Jones of Singing News. My co-host today, the legendary Clayton Inman of Triumphant Quartet. Clayton. We are glad to have you, Clayton. I'm a co-host? Yes, you yes. are. You don't read your emails, do no, you? No, I don't. Okay, you need to try that one day. Well, I've got 400 in my box right now, so... Oh, All the way back to February, right? I will find it. Okay. All right, and of course, we've got Joseph Reed of Singing News Radio. Thank and you, Danny. It's so good. Providing the color commentary for us today, <laughs> the one, the only, Jeff Easter. Hey, yes, sir. All right, Jeff, why don't you introduce everybody oh. else that's with us? You know what I've about your radio voice, Danny? It's What's how you talk when you do your radio. I know. I know. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Because it's not really the way you talk, but right, I it's the, the way you go from up and down. It's so. the spirit of Josh Franks, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Somebody oh, say, oh, my goodness. This is going to be good. Yes, God is. is going to do something. But what did you ask me to do? I, lost I wanted place. you to introduce everybody All else I here. Do, uh, Danny Jones is over there That's to my right. right. <laughs> and over there is Jonathan Haberdang. <laughs> hey, Jonathan. Jonathan is texting all his friends and neighbors and said, tune in right now. I'm on the radio. You ain't going to believe who's on the radio. It's Joseph. Jonathan Haberdang. <laughs> Joseph Jonathan. Hello, everybody. And we've got Clinton Inman co-hosting with you there. That's right. Clinton. Wow. Clinton Inman. I've been watching. Watching Clinton since I was a little boy. When you was with a singing American, uh, you remember when you was a singing American? Yes, sir, Amos, I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got old Donnie Thunderbird. Yes. I remember Donnie when he was with the uh, Gold City. Right. Yes. I went with Gold City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the whole point. <laughs> Just agree with me. I forgot. I forgot who Jeff. Uh, Easter Rabbit was <laughs> well. I've, all right, if you're Don't sitting at home right now trying to think, now I don't remember gospel music that way. There's a reason for uh, that. Okay. <laughs> all right, now let, let's be serious here. We are having a Singing Americans reunion. What's really That's happening here? Really is. Look wow. at here. Jeff Easter was with the Singing Americans. Hey, Danny yes. and uh, Clayton. Wow. You're the only singer here yeah, other I, than Sherry well, who was I, I with wasn't the Singing Americans. I wasn't born, born yet. <laughs> that counts. So that counts. That counts. Mm -hmm. I wasn't born yet. No. You were probably a year old. You might have been a year old. Right. Okay. Yeah. What year were you don't born? Don't say phrases like "I wasn't born yet" because you will lose friends quickly. That's okay? right. <laughs> just just keep know. that in mind. They know. Oh, yeah, it. Going down. Eighty-five. Eighty-five. Oh, yeah. We were no, married. married. Yeah. No, you, married. you weren't born. I weren't born. Oh. I weren't wow. born. You weren't born. <laughs> I were not born. <laughs> but I was a big fan. I used to listen to my uh, Walkman as a five-year-old little boy in oh. Sturgis, Michigan, in our little apartment. I had. You remember those little headphones, and your hair would get stuck in them. Yes. You pull your hair, and you know, those little—they were like foam. And yep. I listened to that. What was that live singing Americans? No, it wasn't a live record. Live it was—was was it live and live? Live yeah, and live. live. Did live that have live. the one about the Statue of Liberty? No. no. Okay. Well, whatever that record was, that's what I, I wasn't had. on that one, so <laughs> no. it's all good. It's not I loved as important. It. I loved it. <laughs> what I really enjoyed about that particular moment right there, we've got three ex singing American members, and oh, neither one of them volunteered the single name of that album for they me. Did. That's, that's they great. Did. Thank you. They hung <laughs> you out to dry. Yeah. Right hey, there. What was the name of that record? I was going to let you do it they by don't yourself. Know it. They don't live know and them. alive. They just don't no, remember live, live. it. Okay, don't that's remember. right. All right. It was probably the project that had Long and Winding Road and all those songs. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody burned my mom a cassette, and it was uh, against the law, but that's how I fell in love with gospel still music, is. breaking the law. <laughs> yep, that was it. Listen to the burned, uh, well, they weren't burned them. Remember, they'd put, they'd put the cassette, they would they would copy it from duplicate. one cassette. They duplicate. Duplicate. Yeah. That duplicated cassette. Yeah. Not not burn as in light them on fire. It's the, yeah, but the that's, that's a but CD that burn. Yeah. Thankfully not they, for the Singing Americans album. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over to Jeff and Sherry Easter, the pride and joy of Lincolnton, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell us what's going on in uh, the world of Jeff and Sherry. The world of Jeff and Sherry, I have summed up this way. Uh, we sat at home at, in, during 2020. And so in 2022, we decided to do all of the dates for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Mm -hmm. We have worked longer, harder hours this year than I remember in the last 10. But it's been We've fun. It's been fun. We've recorded two albums this year. Wow. Uh, slated for release in February of 2023 for our next Jeff and Sherry project. October of 2023 will be our first Christmas CD in over 26, 27 mm. years. Wow. wow. And we're going to have our first Christmas single this, uh, this November. It'll be released. So we've been busy. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. exciting. That's awesome. just, just take a breath and just and run. And we've got some very mm -hmm. special guests on our Jeff and Sherry record, uh, The Sound. Mm -hmm. Sing a song with Ooh. Sherry called uh, Here Comes Jesus. Not Jesus. No, 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 no. Wrong one. Wrong song, but uh, Wrong they song. did. Uh, Here he comes, stepping out. But, 
But my Here Comes Jesus, uh, Mo Pitney wrote, and it oh, said, yeah, Just when I think nobody loves me no more, they're shutting windows and slamming their doors. Here comes Jesus calling my name. Just real Don so Williams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and Mo, Mo, sings Mo that Pitney weekend. sang on it with yeah. me. And then you had special and then, guests. Well, one of my special guests was Kenna Turner. She mm. came in and oh, did a yeah. song that we wrote together. She always accuses me of stealing the low part, <laughs> which I did. It's my project, right? I'll there let you her go. sing high. <laughs> but she did that with me. And then I also had one of those lifetime moments. When I was 15, 16 years old, some of my fra- favorite artists were the Archers, the Cruz family, Russ Taft, the Rambos, all of those were my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Tim Archer on Facebook. We just kind of did that from time to time. Jeff looks at me, he said, why don't you ask him to sing with you on the new album? I said, I can't do that. And he said, yeah, ask him. So I, would you sing that song with me on my new album? And I'm sitting there waiting. He said, we sure would. Mm. So I've got the Archers. Singing sunshine on a cloudy day. They have sang together in 25 years and never sang back up. They've never sung back up for another artist. That's incredible. And and so so they're coming in and they're doing that. And also they're doing their 50th anniversary live album. So... You know, I'm just a kid Ooh, again. That's great stuff. I'm just a kid again. Mm, and, and, you know, Sherry, right now you're sitting next to a living legend. Absolutely. Uh, a, a lot of, well, all of us in this room remember songs like Whiter Than Snow. Yes. Uh, I Just Started Living, I mm-hmm. Can See the Hand. And that gentleman right there was featured on all those songs. Yeah. Danny yeah. Funderburg. Yeah. Danny uh, Funderburg. Uh, Funderburg. Uh, guys, that was a wonderful journey. You know, and I'm still out. I'm still singing. Uh, and it's full-time ministry for my wife and I, and, and we just thank God for what we're doing. We just finished a brand new project that Matthew Holt produced for me. Him and Kevin Williams is on it. Jay McDonald sang bass, oh, yeah. and uh, I found some Marty Funderburg songs. And everybody wants to know if Marty and I are related. And he says no, but I say yes <laughs> because he's a great songwriter. And so the the years that I've been out here, it's 46 years that I've mm. been singing gospel music. And I think it means more to me now than it ever has in Mm -hmm. my whole entire life. I think our ministry is for the church. And so the local church needs to be encouraged right now. Last three years, like you spoke about, it seems like the devil has used all of that to just discourage people. Mm -hmm. You can't get them back in God's house anymore. But there's nothing like coming to God's house and worship. And so this is what we do. We just go out and just say, hey, folks. It's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. Yeah. You know what? we got to keep pressing on. So, yeah, those songs that we sung back years ago, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just amazing to me mm-hmm. that those songs are still alive today. They yeah. are. And, and they were great songs, and I thank God for that. George and Glenn, they were quite two characters, I guess you could say. Um, but we enjoyed it. Us young guys, we learned a lot mm-hmm. from George and Glenn. You know, and one thing George and Glenn were both uh, really good at was putting – young people out front yeah that's right right. and you know you and gerald and and a lot of the other guys who've come along that way they yeah they had their moments on stage but they worked hard at making sure people knew who you were oh yeah well george George wanted to do that because he honestly and i've heard people use this phrase but it started back a few years ago Mm -hmm. when george said once a cathedral always a cathedral Mm -hmm. And that's something I'll never forget as far as, you know, what God has done for me in my life in the, mm-hmm. in the, the uh, Cathedral Quartet. Uh, it was just amazing to see how God was using us back in the 80s. And I'm going to be honest with you, I wished I'd have paid a little more attention mm-hmm. back then because sometimes we let things go by and we don't realize the importance of it or what was taking place. Yep. But I do know this for a fact. I know that God has still got us. Each and every one of us in this room, we're here for a reason. Right. And it's to help spread the gospel. Singing is good for the soul. Mm-hmm. We all know that. Yes. Singing is mentioned over 400 times in the Bible. And 40 of those times, Joseph, are commands. Wow. And thank God that we have the opportunity to serve the Lord singing songs. Amen. Well, and I feel I like I have been to school right there. Yeah. And I, I, noticed, I noticed Joseph, Joseph <laughs> was over here. He was taking very sharp mental notes. We're going to hear some songs out of uh, out of Joseph from what Danny said. I, just, I love Danny Funderburg. I'm, Me too. you know, as a kid growing up in Dayton, Ohio, and fell in love with this music. And one of the biggest records that impacted me was the Cathedral's Reunion. And... Um, and when Danny got up and would sing his two songs, it was just, it was magical to me. And I just, 
I fell in love with it. Oh, and f- when I walked in this room today and saw Danny, I just thought, man, what an honor to be able to sit at the same table as him <laughs> and and to just to be in the same room as you and just thank well, you God for your you. your legacy and and your your influence and and um I probably wouldn't be doing this today if it wasn't for people like you oh, and Jeff you and Sherry and and even Clayton <laughs> and uh Superman. <laughs> you know, Superman. Clayton. Clayton. I love Clayton. A lot of people think even is his first name. How many times have we heard even Clayton? <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful because his son is my best friend. We talk every day and I tease him and we tease each other endlessly and I got to remember Clayton is not Scotty. I have to respect Clayton because <laughs> he's old. But uh um, That's Scotty's grandpa. That's Scotty's grandpa. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, buddy, just, just like <laughs> you don't have buddy. it's just like Danny Clayton has a very uh, great history in Southern mm-hmm. gospel music. I mean, singing mm-hmm. Americans, you did some great singing with that oh, group, wow. one by one, yeah. and of course, you know, oh. now with Triumphant Quartet. And I, folks, I, I truly believe this. Clayton Inman is one of the most unappreciated yeah, vocalist in gospel mm-hmm. music. The what man is solid at what he does. Fantastic, underrated singer. Every yeah, he is a superman. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, yeah. And a great yeah. communicator and featured on their new song. Yes. On their new single, yeah. uh, Triumphant Tell us about Quartet. song, Clayton. Well, it's uh, Scotty rarely lets me sing one of his songs. <laughs> <laughs> rarely. Hey, I know the pain. It's the hair. <laughs> it's the you hair. write a song and your kids never sing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, same, same thing. Uh, he said, he said, I want you to do this one because it's going to take somebody that has, they, they wouldn't take the song as well from a younger person. Uh, it's going to require That's somebody good. older uh, to sing the song because it's kind of, it's, it's not in your face, but it's, it's a, I think it's a thought song uh, in that we get a lot of, we get caught up in a lot of different things. If you show up for church, we don't like the way that lady's dressed over there. We don't like the color of the carpet. We don't like the way the choir's singing. We wish they'd have picked a different song out, this mm. and that. But the whole purpose of the song was, you know, you could have very easily just missed Jesus in your time there because you're focused on these other things that don't really mean anything. That's right. right. That's, That's good. just good stuff That's right yeah. there. Yep. Don't That's miss right. Jesus is the song. Yeah. All yeah. right, folks, we're going to come back in just a few moments with our guest here. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. You're watching Singing News TV, and you're listening to Singing News Radio. Welcome back to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, the National Quartet Convention. This is the NQC Roundtable. I'm Danny Jones of Singing News. Sitting to my right is Joseph Habedank. To his right is Joseph Reed. The other Joseph. The other Joseph. And down there on uh, the other corner is Clayton Inman of Triumphant Quartet. Next to Clayton is the other Danny, Danny Funderburk. And then uh, we have the The only Sherry. The only (laughs) Sherry. Ah, And then Jeff and all of his personalities (laughs) are with us. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) All right, guys, I'm going to go out on a limb here for just a second, and I'm going to get Jeff Easter. (laughs) I want him to ask any question that's on his heart oh, no. uh, of either Danny, Clayton, or Joseph. So, Jeff, this mm. is your moment to shine. Well, let me, before I ask the question, I got to tell Danny, my dad passed away in December, but my daddy, till the day he died, would tell you his favorite tenor singer was Danny Funderburg. Oh, yeah. And my daddy wow. was an incredible tenor singer. Oh, yeah. So he, he was. knows a tenor oh, singer. God bless Y'all him. used to sing Peter Was a Fireball with the Easter Brothers yeah. down at the fish camp in uh-huh. Hickory yeah. years ago. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Clinton, I want to ask Clinton so in the yeah. question. Go right ahead. Well, yes. Clayton, get Clayton. ready. Oh, no. Clayton. I'm scared. <laughs> you got this. I'm so scared. We're Clayton, praying for you. I watch you work out, and I know you're a little older than I am, and I watch you jump up on them boxes. Are you not afraid you'll hurt your knees? Have you had any knee problems or foot problems? No. No, not, not at all. Superman. Superman. What? Superman. So how much weight did you lose total when you decided, because I can look at some old pictures and you just kind of swole up. And I just didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how big you was there. So how much weight did you lose? Before we Before you look like you do now. 40 like, pounds. Okay. For real? Uh-huh. Or them four pounds are really look. Forty. Oh, forty. <laughs> four. I, 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 I thought you said four. four I was like, I wish I had those four pounds right there. Your <laughs> <laughs> pounds weighed a lot, didn't it? But no, you look incredible. I follow you, and for those that don't follow you on Facebook, can anybody follow you on Facebook? It's your. If they want to. Because I watch to. you work out. Yeah. Do you still do that every day? If they want to. Yeah, every. <laughs> uh, well, actually, about three days a week. 
And do you still uh, video? Because at one time you used video. Uh, that, that, that was for uh, reasons. Okay. You know what? And not necessarily anymore. What was well, you're reason? very healthy. And your wife looks amazing. Yes, she Thank does. you. She Thank does. you. She's worked very <sighs> hard. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yep. I've got a hand that weighs 40 pounds. <laughs> it's, a ham? it's this Did you one. Say a ham? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> a ham right there. You know, throughout this entire conversation, uh, we, we, we've heard references to the impressions that people have left upon us. And, uh, of course, you know, all of our lives, Joseph, have been touched, especially by those four sitting over it's, there. It can't even be described. Right. Really. Joseph Habedank, now, he's in the position. Mm where the lives he will influence a lot of those people he's not met yet mm -hmm. so joseph sure, when point. you good point when you when it's all said and done for joseph habedank and you want people to remember how they've been impacted by your life what do you want them to say about you oh man that's it that is a great question that's deep um you know as much as I, I, you know, five years ago, I'd have said, I, I'd want him to say I was a good singer and good songwriter. And, but man, the older I get, I just want them to say he was a good guy. He was a good man. And I don't know that I'm necessarily there yet, but I, I'm a work in progress just like everybody else. But, you know, it's interesting what you said because the people that have impacted me, a lot of them are sitting at this table and are in this convention hall. And I don't necessarily see the people that I am influencing or am, am, um, but, but it can get a little discouraging sometimes because yeah. this industry is really built on legacy, older artists. Uh, in fact, the, it seems like the older you get, and I, I mean this very respectfully, the older you get, sometimes you become more successful. And even though I've been doing it for 20 years this year, it's still, I'm still kind of young compared to a lot of the older legacy artists and so it can you know especially at the beginning um it, it can be discouraging but at the end of the day you know my singing and my songwriting really doesn't matter what matters is who i am when yeah. i walk off the stage yeah and that's what i've had to learn the hard way for anybody who knows my story uh because the person i am when nobody's watching that's who i really am and so that's when i want to be the best I can be, and uh, so yeah, that's what I. That's probably my biggest. As I get older, that's my biggest goal: is just to be a, a good human being and a good husband, a good friend. And uh, I'll just keep working till I yeah. till I get there. Yeah. You know, good. several years ago, um, Sherry Easter and I were talking at their homecoming event there in Lincoln. We remember the uh, time 30, 30, 35 years ago when all of us were the new kids on the block, and now you know we. We've all got a few miles on us, and we're we're all asked many times, "How do I be? You know, how how am I going to be successful in gospel music? How do I get to where you are?" And you know, we all know there is no such thing as a true overnight success mm -hmm. in this. You know, mm -hmm. most overnight mm -hmm. successes in southern gospel music have thirty years of experience that's with a, them. That's exactly right. And uh, Sherry has a wonderful way of putting thoughts into words and uh, sherry if, if you could give a piece of advice that every rising gospel artist should listen to what would you tell them i actually did this today we had lunch with the sound those precious two boys Great and i was sitting there with levi and jacob and i said the one thing that i do regret because i'm a doer you know me i'm a doer and I try really hard to be, because I think it takes both. We've gotta be doers and we've gotta just be some days. And I said, I was so busy working from the times, you know, with the Lewis family and playing the, the uh, Lincoln Center and, and playing, you know, uh, Smithsonian. And then being with Bill Gaither, playing Carnegie Hall and mm. the Red Rocks Amphitheater and um, you know, all of those incredible venues, the Opry, the Ryman, so many of these huge um, domes and, and, and uh, convention centers. I said, and the hard part was, I was just doing a job. So I was working, so I was doing. I was setting up stuff, I was taking down stuff, I was singing, making sure this was done, that was done, helping the product. And you get beyond it and you go, wow, that was so cool. Mm -hmm. That was so awesome to be able to do this. 
And so I looked at those two little boys today, and I said, I know you want to be your best. I know you want to sing your best. I know you want to make every word and every mm. note count for Christ. I said, but when it all boils down to it, absorb Don't more Don't miss of it. the day-to-day. Mm -hmm. Do this more often. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. sit down with somebody that you care about and, 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 and feel what's going on in the moment because a lot of the phone stuff is making us miss it. Yes, mm. and that's so what's true. Important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to it's absorb so true. these moments. It's like Danny was saying with the cathedrals, you know, just wish you'd have soaked well, it in a little bit. Yeah. It went by so fast. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of times we don't we don't realize the importance. I mean, it's, it's something that we're trying to reach for. Mm -hmm. And we're, I've used this example many a times, even when I share with the people, I said, I love where God's got me. I've been around it my whole life. I said, I think what bothers me is when I see people singing and doing a work for the Lord. And they're actually looking back saying, God, why are you not blessing us? Oh, my. Because they don't get it. Mm. Because it. we should actually be looking forward and following in his footsteps. Yeah. Instead of doing something, like you said, yes. going through the motions, just setting up, singing a song, and, you know, and missing that moment to where, you know what, if we're just being obedient to the Lord and say, okay, God, you lead me, mm. you know, I'm not in front, you're in front. And watch what God can do. Mm. He can make people change their minds. He can make people do things that they never dreamed that they would do for you and your ministry simply because you've been obedient and following in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. And to me, that's what it's all about. I'm no one. Mm. I'm no one. But I'm somebody mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Right. Praise God. I've got one more question, and this is a very unusual question, and it's, it's, it's a very personal question. All of us around this table, we've all recently lost someone who is close to us. Yeah. And since that particular person has gone on, there have been times we wanted to pick up the phone and say, Dad, guess what I did today? Mom, yeah. what, you'll never believe what happened to me today. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. What is that moment for you, Jeff Easter? What, what would you have really wanted to call James Easter and tell him? Well, one blessing I have, you know, the iPhones have to find my friends. And Denise, my dad's widow, still has daddy's phone activated. So every time I look and find my friends, I see my brother rabbit, my sister, and it says daddy's home. Yeah. So <laughs> in my mind, daddy's still in Manor, North Carolina. And when I saw daddy in the casket at the funeral home, I was like, you know what? He's not there. No. You know, that body's no more than it's the casket that he's in. It's just right. a shame. Yeah. And when I realized and saw the spirit and my daddy was gone, he wasn't there. Oh, yeah. But there's lots of times that I want to pick up. I call Daddy every week. Sherry will tell you. I said, I'm going to call Daddy because I can't. <laughs> every yeah. day I'd call Daddy. I said, I'm going to call him, and now I can't. And yeah. it's tough, you know. Yeah. But uh, I got so many great videos. I just talking about put God first. When I was at my lowest point at 24 years old, I was with the Singing Americans, and I just felt like I didn't want to live anymore. I, and uh, yeah. I remember Daddy praying with me, and after the prayer, he said, put God first. Everything else will fall into place. Good day. And uh, he <laughs> prayed with me, and two months later, I met Sherry. I mean, he prayed for me, a pretty woman. I could have <laughs> got her in. <laughs> <laughs> and look what she got, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and look what she got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of make, think about that song, Always Marry an Ugly Girl, She Leaves You, You Won't Mind. Yeah. <laughs> no one was There's praying for Sherry. I'm, That's I'm, I'm just wondering why Polly was praying for Sherry. <laughs> 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 God didn't answer my that prayer. My mama was praying for laughter is what my mama was You've got to go through the hard stuff. You need a Jeff Easter in That's, oh, that's you exactly right. He's been good as gold. That. Joseph, I'm going to ask you the same question. Yeah, so I lost um, my grandmother this year. It's funny. It's not funny, but now I'm losing my grandparents, and it's difficult for me. And I told my wife, I said, I can't imagine losing my parents. Because it's hard when you lose a grandparent, I, and I'm sure it's that much harder when you lose yeah, a mom and dad. And I can't imagine. But, um, you know, I, I remember calling her on Mother's Day, and she was getting ready. She had, they found cancer in her nose and up into her brain, and they were, she was going to have surgery. And I said, Grandma, do you, want me to, uh, do you want me to come up before the surgery, or do you want me to come up after when you're better? She said, just come up after. She said, I, I'll be she, – she thought she was going to make it. Right. Well, come to find out. She'd gone through her closet, and her clothes were gone. She knew she wasn't coming home. She, she got rid of everything. She wouldn't tell us. She didn't want me to go out yeah. of the way. And So I guess for me, I probably wish 
I would have taken that trip. But there was no way to know. Right. There was no, no way. way for me to know. There's the no only way. thing I could do is just tell her I love her, and yeah. I knew she was proud of what I was accomplishing. My family's very conservative Baptist, and it's funny because musically I kind of went not on purpose, but I, I went to a, a new place musically, and Good. she never one time commented on the progress of my music. It never, it wasn't, even though I knew some of my stuff was going to be too too rowdy. Too, she never <laughs> once <laughs> said to me, well, I like that hymns record. She never I don't really like your new stuff. It, never that. It was yeah. always, I'm proud of you. I That's love good. you. Keep doing what you're doing. That's great. You were Joseph you the grandson, good. not Joseph the singer. It didn't matter. So yeah, it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, Clayton, I know you've just come through a very difficult time uh, with the loss of your mom. And um, nobody has any doubt whatsoever where your mom is yeah. today. Yeah. And uh, your mom was a great example of what a Christian woman should be like. And uh, I know you're proud of her. Yeah, yeah, really, really am. And, and the beautiful thing, yeah, if there's a beautiful thing out of it, uh, she's been able to be a part of the last almost 20 years triumphant too. Mm -hmm. So she's seen it all and, and been a part of a lot of things that, that we would have. And it, it, was a, it was an honor and a thrill to know that she was there. Uh, and she was, she was my, like Joseph, she was my biggest fan. Uh, and she would let Eric know that if Eric said anything bad about me on stage, he heard about it later. <laughs> uh, he, although he was joking. I love yeah. that. My dad passed away in 2002. And at that time I was with one by one and Scotty had only been singing with Phil Cross and Floyd voices for maybe a few months since October, maybe. And on January 5th, Poet Voices was coming, was coming to Memphis to sing. And my dad was excited to go see him because he had not heard Scotty sing at all wow. with another group. Well, my dad passed on the 5th, mm -hmm. the morning of the 5th. So if I was to the ability to call him. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. Right. Take it. <laughs> Hey, Dad, we're okay. Yeah. And you ought to hear Scotty. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Exactly. I believe he has. <laughs> he has. He's got the best seat in the house. Yeah. You better he believe it. But it's pretty awesome. It's so, some things that have been great for him to see because he loved the music. He loved it, us singing it. And so, anyway, that's, that, that would have been my call to him. And I want to say, Clayton, I, I just want to thank you for for raising the son that you did, the, the friend that he's been to me. Um, since I've gotten clean and, and sober, and he, uh, it's it's unbelievable the, the times I've called him, and he's just I've been discouraged, and he'd say something that lifted me up, and man, you just did an amazing job yes. at yeah. teaching him how to be a, a good human being, and uh, and to love people, and he just he's just a good man, and you're and I know you raised him, and so thank you. Just want to say thanks. And Scotty's one of the very few when Small Town came out. He just made a special call. He said, wow, he like, yeah. this song, who wrote it? He said, this. He's mm -hmm. always there with an encouragement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, and you got to love someone. You are too, Clay. Yeah. Right. You yeah, are too, good right. man, You're very good. You do. Good man. All right, folks, you've seen the human side of Southern Gospel artists today. And <laughs> yes, here's the thing have. about it. We want, to, we want to leave you with this. Southern Gospel music not only ministers to you, it ministers to us. This Amen. is a family. Everybody's got That's their right. favorites. Everybody does things a little bit different. But you know what? We're all here together, and we all have each other's backs. So you can be proud of the Southern Gospel Music community because yeah. they're real. Folks, thanks for tuning in to Singing News Radio, Singing News TV. Come back later for more of the NQC Roundtable. We'll see you soon. It's the most well-known publication in Southern Gospel music. With a 50-year history as the voice of an industry, it's the Singing News Magazine. With a focus on people for generations to come, bringing artists and fans together. 
When you subscribe for the next 12 months, you'll receive news about your favorite artists, groups, and events, plus personal appearances and up-to-date Southern Gospel concert information. You'll get the official Top 80 chart, the Bluegrass Gospel chart. You'll see fan favorite photos, and you can vote for the Singing News Fan Awards. Order today and get a premium gift. Call 1-800-527-5226. Mention promo code SING22 for the premium gift. Or visit online at singingnews.com. 